Hello, welcome to the crisis and safety planning training for VPBS specific trainings. Uh, my name is Kimberly Weitzman. I am QA and training manager here at VPBS and I will be presenting this training to you today. Um, so the objectives of this crisis and safety planning training are to define what a mental health crisis is and how therapy and case management can help alleviate the stress of a crisis. Uh, you will understand how VPBS handles crisis situations according to uh, law, as well as CARF standards, also VPBS crisis intervention policy. You'll be able to identify clinical risk factors, including suicide, violence, and other risky behaviors, and how to determine lethality. You will be able to identify needed items to complete a full lethality assessment and how to contract for safety using our safety and wellness plan. And lastly, you'll be uh, viewing a special webinar to learn how to complete the CSSRS, the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale uh, within the diagnostic assessment and when it is appropriate to evaluate a client who um, perhaps is going through a crisis. Um, so before we get started, I wanna make sure that you have everything you need to fully uh, participate and engage in this training and to complete all the requirements required for this training. Um, so some of the things that you will need is first of all, um, you will need a copy of the crisis and safety planning quiz. Uh, this should be in your training binder, um, or you can get one from your supervisor as well. Um, in order to get credit for attending the crisis and safety planning training, you need to sign the acknowledgement or the sign off sheet. Um, so please also in your binder find the crisis and safety planning acknowledgement sign off sheet. Um, after you have completed the entire training, including the CSSRS training at the end, you will check off all of the boxes, sign it and date it, and turn it into your supervisor um, to, be to be reviewed with them. Um, so please get the quiz and the acknowledgement sign off sheet if you don't already have those in front of you. And there are a couple other items that we are going to review as we complete this training and it would be very helpful um, if you had those in front of you. I will also be showing them on the screen, um, but you might wanna take notes on your own copies of these handouts or these items. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to find is a safety wellness plan, um, either again in your binder or you can get a copy from your supervisor. I'll show you what that looks like when we get there. We'll also be reviewing um, crisis resources, which are typically included with the client discharge letter. And we will also learn about some national crisis resources. Um, we'll be reviewing a handout from NAMI called Navigating a Mental Health Crisis. Um, that should be in your binder, but I will pull it up on the screen as well. Uh, we will be going over the VPBS crisis intervention policy and procedure. So it would be, would be helpful to have that um, in front of you in case you want to take any notes on that as we go over it. Um, should be in your binder. You can also always access uh, the most up-to-date policies and procedures from my ViaQuest. Um, you're going to want to have a copy of the most up-to-date crisis assessment. Um, the most up-to-date one I have is dated uh, 1-7- 2021. Um, but if you're viewing this um, after this date, there might be an even more up-to-date version. So make sure you have the most up-to-date version of the crisis assessment. Um, you should also have a handout regarding on-call services for our residential services. We'll be reviewing that. And lastly, um, we will be reviewing uh, the CSSRS, like I said, the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. At the very end of this training, there will be a link to complete that webinar, which will then help you to complete not only your quiz, um, but the training regarding crisis and safety planning for today. Um, so you might wanna stop the video at this point, go make sure you have all of those items. Um, if you're not able to access those items, like I said, I will be bringing them up on the screen um, so you can follow along with me as we go. 
Um, so again, by the end of this training, please complete the quiz. I will give you quiz reminders as we go throughout the training. So pay attention for the quiz reminders. And then again, sign the acknowledgement form, give it to your supervisor. All right, so let's start with why is crisis and suicide prevention important? And uh, this is backed up by lots of statistics and research and information from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. And the statistics that we have is unfortunately, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the US across all age groups. Um, looking at a day-to-day -day statistic, every day, approximately 123 Americans die by suicide. Um, again, according to the CDC. Um, you'll see a graphic on the screen referencing World Suicide Prevention Day. Um, I want to give you a quiz question reminder that May, the month of May, is Mental Health Awareness Month. And in regards to World Suicide Prevention Day, that is September 10th. Uh, so again, May, Mental Health Aware Awareness Month, September 10th, World Suicide Prevention Day. Um, some more statistics regarding uh, suicide and uh, crisis intervention and why it is so important. Um, the CDC finds that there is one suicide that is completed for every 25 suicide attempts. So one in 25 attempts is a completed suicide. Um, there is an even higher rate in our elderly population, one suicide completed for every estimated four suicide attempts in the elderly population. Um, so those four statistics to me definitely justify why uh, crisis and safety planning is so important and why crisis and suicide prevention is so important. And um, hopefully the idea is that we're preventing crisis and suicides by completing the crisis and safety plans. Um, as we go through treatment with our clients. Okay, so let's start with what even are the warning signs that somebody could be experiencing a mental health crisis or that a mental health crisis could be coming soon for a particular person. Um, the ideas and the suggestions and the signs and symptoms that you've seen up here on the screen are taken from the handout that you should have called Navigating a Mental Health Crisis. Um, I'll show you what that looks like just so you can reference it and then I'll summarize. Um, so this is what that handout looks like. Navigating a Mental Health Crisis, some warning signs that somebody is in or is approaching a mental health crisis and then some warning signs that somebody could perhaps be contemplating suicide or actually planning to go through with a suicide. And again, this information comes from NAMI, the National Association for Mental Illness. Um, so just to summarize uh, some warning signs of a mental health crisis is that a person might be unable to complete their daily tasks, such as getting up, getting dressed, brushing their teeth, taking a shower, um, taking care of their home or their apartment. They might actually be saying or writing or uh, perhaps implying that they would like to kill themselves or you know, talking about death. Um, those could all be indicators that they're in a mental health crisis or a mental health crisis is perhaps on the horizon for them. Um, some other warning signs of a mental health crisis could be that that person is withdrawing from friends, family, their typical social situations. Um, even with COVID-19, we might see even more withdrawing. I know we can't go out and about like we normally can, but maybe they're not even getting on Zoom. Maybe they're not even answering their text messages. Maybe they've stopped even responding from emails. Those could also be some signs um, of withdrawing uh, from social situations. We might also see people being impulsive or reckless in their behavior or even becoming aggressive in their behavior. And that would be a, a difference in their behavior from before. Um, you might also see a dramatic shift in their mood 
or in their sleeping or their eating patterns, um, either sleeping much more than they used to or unable to sleep at all. Um, again, eating too much or not being able to eat at all. So just, um, you know, basically a, a significant change in their mood and in their behavior. Um, so as we are talking about these warning signs of a mental health crisis, um, I want to remind you that there are um, crisis referrals and resources listed on the discharge summary that we send to every client as they are discharged. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And again, to show you where that is located. Um, so here is the discharge letter that we send again, every client. Um, this one is for the central region. Every region has their own customized um, referrals for that uh, specific area um, that are unique to that area. So, um, you know, please uh, use these resources, point them out to your clients, make sure that they do actually get to clients who have been discharged. Okay, so another um, important resource are these national resources that are available to us, um, that are available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, this is also a quiz question. Um, number three on your quiz asks about uh, national crisis contacts. And here is one, it's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The phone number is 1-800. 273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. Um, you could also visit the website suicidepreventionlifeline.org. So another great resource to um, always make sure clients have handy just in case they might need it or somebody they know might perhaps need it. Um, so these days people are sometimes more comfortable texting and so they might want to text to the crisis text line, um, you would text uh, for hope as the message to the number 741, 741, and be able to receive um, support by a text message. If that is something uh, one of your clients might be more comfortable doing um, in that manner. So we have a couple options. Uh, we have many options actually to provide crisis and um, mental health resources and referrals to our clients. Okay, so go ahead and find the safety plan, um, hopefully that you have um, in front of you to reference as we go over the components of the wellness and safety plan. Uh, before I actually open it up, um, I'm going to give you a couple of pieces of information or reminders, hopefully, about the safety plan. Um, and these are also quiz questions. Um, so it is best practice for all clients to have a safety plan at the start of treatment, just in case a crisis occurs, um, they can be ready and have the necessary information to help them through that crisis already at their fingertips. However, it's not required for every client. Um, it is required for our residential clients, for our VRS clients, and it is also required for any client who has a history of suicidal ideations or homicidal ideations. It would also be required to create one if they then voice suicidal or homicidal ideations in the course of treatment. Um, so there are certain clients that have uh, fallen into that category where it is required for them to have one. Um, another reminder is we use the paper, wellness and safety plan, and then we upload it to the client's chart from there because the one listed in safety care is not up to current standards. Um, so please use the paper one, upload it to safety care and provide a copy to the client so they can keep it with them. Also ensuring that you have the most up-to-date safety plan. Um, the most up-to-date one I could find is dated 10-23-2020. Um, again, if you're viewing this uh, training at a later date, make sure you have the most up-to-date wellness and safety plan. 
Um, another quiz question while we're on this slide is a reminder that safety plans are reviewed on an annual basis, um, but absolutely can be reviewed as needed throughout treatment. If they need to update their contacts information, if they discover other coping strategies, we wanna add those to their safety plan as treatment um, continues. So updated and reviewed at least annually and also throughout treatment as needed. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the actual wellness and safety plan. Um, you should have one in front of you or you can follow along on the one that I'm gonna be showing you here on the screen. Um, so it just starts out by asking, what are the triggers or the warning signs that this client shows when they are feeling unsafe? And you wanna make sure that we ask about physical symptoms. Um, are they having um, you know, that's a, up, upset stomachs? Are they having headaches? Um, what do they notice um, in their body? Increased panic attacks, for example. Uh, what are the emotional triggers that they notice when they're starting to feel unsafe? Is it being around a certain person? Is it being in a certain area that causes these emotions um, to come up? Um, ask, you know, ask some detailed questions to get some good information about perhaps emotional triggers. Um, also thinking about environmental triggers. Do they tend to be triggered at work? Do they tend to be triggered at home or at school? You know, really explore all of the places that the client goes, again, to get very specific triggers or uh, warning signs, physically, emotionally, and environmentally. Try to get at least three in this particular category. Um, the next box asks about coping skills. You know, what do they already know are coping skills that can help them when they feel safe and try to be as specific as possible. Things like, um, you know, taking a walk for at least 10 minutes, um, you know, doing deep breathing um, for at least five minutes in a quiet place. Um, you know, get as specific as you can about coping skills. Um, also, who are your supports? Who are the people in their lives that they can go to, that they feel comfortable and safe with, and list their names, list their contact information, list the relationship to the client. Um, please also, you know, not only including friends and family, but include mental health providers. Um, maybe they're going to be able to call one of those suicide hotlines that we mentioned, or they could text one of those um, suicide resources that we mentioned. Please be thorough in uh, trying to identify as many sources of support for the client as well as coping skills that they could use. Uh, the next box asks, if you were feeling or are feeling unsafe, would you have access to weapons or anything that could be considered lethal? If yes, how could they possibly safety proof their home, including securing weapons? Or would it make more sense just to leave their home and go somewhere else that would be considered more safe? So problem solve um, what they could do to lock up knives, um, what they could do to perhaps give their medication to somebody that they trust if they're thinking about overdosing perhaps. Um, so really thinking through um, how they could make themselves safer in their home or going to a place that is safer for them to be when they're feeling unsafe. Uh, the next box talks about where will they keep the safety plan. Um, it could be beneficial to keep it in their pocket. Maybe they keep it in their purse. Maybe they hang it up on their refrigerator so they see it every time they walk by. Um, hang it up in their bathroom next to their mirror. You know, whatever works best for them is what we want to do. Maybe we can even make five or six copies so they can keep copies, um, you know, in many different places in the car. Um, Again, in their desk at work, get creative and make it specific to the needs of that particular client. Uh, the next box asks about who will they share their safety plan with? Um, who is important and, trust, and trustful in their life that they could share this with? Um, spouse, friend, neighbor, cousin, um, you know, who, who in their life would understand and be able to support them? in following through with their safety plan, holding them accountable for remembering what's in their safety plan. And again, asking again, who will you contact if you're feeling unsafe? And will you contact these people 
if you are feeling unsafe. Just one more time reviewing who are the supports in their lives and ensuring that they feel uh, comfortable to contact them. Last question here, what can you do to ensure the safety of yourself, the public and others? So really uh, thinking ahead, not only of your own safety, but for the safety of others. Um, if somebody is feeling you know, suicidal, very depressed, very anxious, maybe they're not considering their own safety, but they might be mindful and considerate of the safety of others. Um, so we can think of all of those areas, their own safety, as well as safety of the public, safety for friends and family who might be um, around them. Um, so brainstorming what they could do to ensure their own safety. And then you'll see uh, at the bottom is phone numbers for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline again that we already reviewed. They can also text um, to the crisis text line. And then you might also want to write in some local resources. Um, again, remembering those are listed on the discharge letter um, or list perhaps local resources they may have used in the past that were helpful to them. So if you are filling out a safety plan with a client and you forget what is, uh, what is needed in each box, don't worry, on the back of the safety plan are some instructions. So you can always reference the reverse side of the safety plan to walk you through um, completing the safety plan with, their with, with your client, excuse me. Um, so step number nine listed on the back is important. Um, discuss with the client. By signing this, they are agreeing to the contract of safety at least until the next session they have with you or another mental health care provider or case manager. Uh, make sure that they sign and date it. Um, you also are going to want to sign and date it as well. Give a copy or even several copies to the client and then again upload a copy to their chart. Um, so hopefully that's a good um, introduction to completing the safety plan. If you ever have a question about completing a safety plan, please don't hesitate to ask your supervisor or again, you can consult the back of the safety plan for directions on how to complete it. Okay. So that is a general overview of the safety plan. Um, we're going to go on now to talk about specifically VPBS crisis intervention services. And I'll start um, just by letting you know that VPBS is CARF accredited to provide crisis intervention services to our clients. And if you are new to the field and you have never heard of CARF before, um, I just wanna give you a little bit of information of what CARF stands for and what it is. Um, CARF stands for uh, the Commission on Accreditation of Rehabilitation Facilities. Um, it is an accreditation body that is um, an independent nonprofit um, group of uh, you know, health and human services providers that is uh, supporting agencies to improve the quality of their services, um, to ensure that they're demonstrating value and meeting uh, internationally recognized organizational and program standards. So really helping um, agencies to provide the best possible services uh, for the clients that they serve. If you want more information about CARF, I encourage you to check out www.carf.org if you're interested in what exactly CARF is and uh, what it takes to become a CARF accredited program. Um, so going a little bit deeper into uh, crisis intervention services, we will review our crisis intervention policy. We're going to go through the actual crisis assessment and we'll also talk about the on-call program for residential programs. Um, so go ahead, if you haven't already, and pull out your crisis intervention policy and procedure. We will go over that first, and I will also bring it up on the screen in case you don't have it, so you can follow along. Okay, um, so if this is the first time that you're ever seeing one of our VPPS 
um, policies and procedures. I'll just take a second to orient you to how all of our policies and procedures are formatted and set up. Um, so over here in this box refers to the policy type and the program that it applies to. Um, over here is the policy number in case you want to look it up on my ViaQuest by the particular policy number, you can do that. And the checkbox here indicates that this applies to ViaQuest Psychiatric and Behavioral Solutions, VPBS. Um, the date that it was originally issued, 2016, and then it's been revised several times. This is the most up-to-date copy having been revised as recently as January 11th, 2021. Um, so it always starts out with the policy, information regarding this specific policy. So VPBS provides crisis intervention services for intermediate, I'm sorry, immediate stabilization of acute mental health, acute symptoms. VPBS will provide crisis intervention CI services in response to a crisis or an emergency a client is experiencing. The purpose of this policy is that VPBS will provide crisis intervention services as an addition to clients' current services in addressing their mental health needs. VPBS will assure compliance with all applicable local, state, and federal regulations, as well as those CARF accreditation standards I mentioned just a few minutes earlier. So here's a good definition um, included in the procedure of crisis intervention here at VPBS. Uh, crisis intervention is an interaction responding to an emergent situation that may include emergent care, crisis assessment, immediate stabilization, de-escalation, counseling, care planning, resolution, and the determination of level of care in the least restrictive environment, and experiencing a life-threatening or complex emergent situation related to mental illness or substance use disorder. Um, we want our crisis intervention services, uh, mental health services to be accessible, responsive and timely to safely deescalate a client or situation, to provide hospital pre-screening, to institute interventions to minimize psychological trauma, to determine the appropriate level of care, to coordinate the follow-through of services and make appropriate referrals. Um, so just a couple of reminders that a client seeking crisis intervention services must already be actively receiving other services through VPBS. Um, this client must have a known or a suspected mental health diagnosis or substance related disorder. The client must be considered at a risk of harm to themselves, others or property. Um, ranging from mild to imminent. And then I'm not going to read this entire policy to you, but there is uh, more information about what um, that risk of harm might look like. Um, so here comes a quiz question. I believe we are on question number five, that a licensed therapist must complete a crisis assessment within 24 hours of being notified that the crisis is occurring. Um, it is important to know that the therapist or sometimes the nurse practitioner must complete this crisis assessment first. And then once they have determined the level of care, a TBS worker or a nurse may then follow up with crisis management services, which are slightly different than crisis intervention. Um, so many different things could happen as a result of this assessment. Perhaps they could be stabilized, perhaps they might be hospitalized if it is a very serious type of crisis in order to keep them safe. Uh, but that will be up to the discretion of the clinician or the nurse practitioner who is completing that assessment. Um, so again, I encourage you to read this uh, crisis assessment policy in its entirety. Um, right now, I am just giving you a general overview of it. Um, and please, if you have any questions, you can always ask your supervisor. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the crisis assessment. And I'll give you again, 
another overview of the crisis assessment. I encourage you also to look at the copy that you have and um, you know, even in more detail, again, asking questions of your supervisor. Um, so we'll just kind of go box by box and talk about uh, what is included on the assessment. We want to start with what is a presenting problem? Why is this client seeking crisis intervention? How long has it been going on? What is the severity, severity of it? What is the nature of it? What are the suicidal ideations that they're experiencing? Is it more of a psychotic episode? When did this start? Um, so trying to get just you know, the facts of the situation, the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, we also wanna note if these issues have arisen since their last crisis stabilization or if they have perhaps become exacerbated. If this is their first crisis assessment, that would be not applicable or perhaps there have been no new issues um, reported. Um, then we go into a lethality assessment. We're going to assess if the client is displaying these current symptoms or experiencing um, these situations in regards to their crisis. Um, are they most importantly having suicidal and homicidal ideations? Are they having suicidal or homicidal means to hurt themselves or others? Um, do they have suicidal or homicidal plans for themselves or others? Have they made a suicidal or homicidal attempt? Do they have a history of suicidal or homicidal ideations, attempts, or plans? Um, we want to figure out, is there a risk of harm to that client or to others? Assess their sexual or, or physical abuse history. And then we're gonna go into some life stressors that they might be experiencing, perhaps financial, um, perhaps relationship issues, other medical concerns or mental health concerns, um, and indicate not only if they are having those, but if you have checked yes, please include some details of what that looks like for that particular client and how they are experiencing it. A couple of reminders at the bottom of the first page that you are required to um, do a duty to warn if the client has verbalized homicidal intent. We need to take action to protect the person that they um, have ha been having thoughts or intentions of harming. Um, if your clinical opinion based on those facts support that the client is lethal, they need to go directly to the nearest hospital for possible hospitalization. Um, continuing on to page two, we have a mental status exam. I'm not going to go into um, the details of the mental status exam. It is very similar to the mental status exam that is completed at assessment. Um, it's an extended version of the mini mental status exam that is listed on the progress note, but please um, complete it in its entirety with details if needed on the bottom where we elaborate any kind of positive mental status findings. So that is the entire of page two. Uh, moving on to page three, um, we're going to briefly assess them clinically as far as current medical conditions, medications, any kind of substance abuse or alcohol abuse, um, briefly give a description of their current living situation. If they have a crisis history, what interventions have been helpful in the past or not helpful in the past, and then identify some strengths and coping skills they already have. Um, we wanna build on any strengths or coping skills that they may have already found helpful and are skilled at. Um, the next section is the mental health crisis intervention. What are we going to do? Um, please identify the most immediate needs and how we are going to treat that. What is um, the most risk of them hurting themselves or hurting others, and how can we keep them from hurting themselves or hurting others? What supports are in place um, to uh, support them through this crisis? Is it other agencies that we need to contact to uh, collaborate with? Is it the residential program that we need to collaborate with? Do they have a guardian? Um, we should definitely be letting the guardian and the residential team know that this client is in crisis. Um, please specify what kind of immediate action has been taken. Did we call the police? Were they um, seen by an EMT, for example, um, a psychiatrist? What does the immediate action that was taken look like? 
And then what is the crisis intervention plan? Um, not only the plan, but what is the follow-up on that? This is where um, TBS workers can get the information about what they can do for crisis management to perhaps de-escalate and support the client through de-escalating and working through what happened during that crisis. Or perhaps the nurses are also supporting the client after the crisis has been de-escalated. We also might need to make other referrals, may need to make other medical referrals, link them um, with other resources in the community. Please outline that in that box there. Um, we need to check that we completed a progress note in reference to this crisis assessment. And we might need to update their diagnosis in smart care if we're seeing new symptoms and they meet criteria for a different diagnosis than one that is listed on their treatment plan. I'm sorry, <laughs> on their diagnostic assessment. Um, also included in the crisis, crisis assessment is another wellness and safety plan that we have already gone over. Um, just so you have it handy, it's also in the crisis assessment packet. And again, on the back of it is the directions for completing the safety plan. So it's all there in one nice packet. Um, please complete the crisis assessment and the safety plan within that session with the client so they can sign it and date it and take it with them. Um, yes, yeah, so please fully review the crisis assessment um, with the client as well as the safety plan. In, in, that, in that session that you're in. Okay, so we have covered the crisis intervention policy. We have covered the crisis assessment as well as the safety plan. And next we're gonna talk about the on-call program and how that pertains to crisis services. So let me pull up that handout just in case you don't have it in the front of you. There it is. Okay, um, so what this outlines is um, the steps to take if you think a client, a residential client or a client who's in a mental or behavioral health program is in crisis and how to decide kind of what to do. Um, so I'm gonna actually start at the bottom. These are things we can rule out right away that are not crises. So things that can wait until the next business day to be reported are questions about staff schedules or client schedules, just general office questions, questions about paychecks, um, you know, kind of administrative questions can wait about paid time off, supplies, and appointments. Those can wait. However, we might be looking at a crisis situation with a client if um, they are perhaps um, experiencing triggers that might be leading to a crisis over here under the mental or behavioral health side. If they are extremely agitated or restless and they are not able to be redirected, uh, maybe a holiday or an anniversary um, related to trauma is coming up. We might uh, notice that restlessness and the agitation because of that holiday. If they've been exposed to a trigger or a situation that makes them uncomfortable, could be the precursor to a crisis. Um, if a person is showing warning signs, those warning signs that we already went over on that navigating a mental health crisis handout, um, subtle or overt signs of changes in their thoughts, feelings, or behavior as it relates to homicidal or suicidal threats or ideation. Again, unable being able to be redirected as is outlined in their person-centered plan. And if a person continues to display these warning signs and is unable to use their coping skills, we're gonna to wanna to be calling um, crisis services. Um, so that's in regards to client behavior. Over here, under residential services, that we have some administrative um, instances where we might want to be calling crisis services. If there are medical issues that require action to be taken, um, for example, if a client is choking, if we have to use an EpiPen, if there's a serious injury requiring medical treatment or a med error, we would then call administrative on-call. Um, so just to differentiate, um, up here on the top of this handout is the number for on-call services 
888-959-2760. And then you are going to want to press the appropriate number corresponding to the region where you are currently working. And you will press four for all, for all mental and behavioral health needs. Um, so hopefully that outlines the process for identifying if this really is a mental or behavioral health crisis or if it is a administrative on-call um, need. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact your supervisor for some clarification on that. going to return back to the PowerPoint. All right, so we have reviewed the crisis intervention policy. We have reviewed the crisis assessment, and we have also reviewed the on-call program. Um, so now we're going to go on to CSSRS, the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. Um, if you have your new higher orientation binder, you should find in your binder a CSSRS um, for adults. It's called Lifetime or Recent Version. You should also have a CSSRS for um, the pediatric population um, since last contact. Um, so in the webinar that you're going to be viewing, they're going to be covering um, the lifetime recent version used on adults, but we have provided you also with a copy of the pediatric version as well, in case you are a clinician working with children. Um, so up on the screen, you'll see the link for the webinar. Um, after you have completed the webinar, there will also be a quiz at the end. Um, please be sure to click on all of the videos and all of the links that are within the webinar. Sometimes there's more than one on each screen. Um, it's estimated that it should take you between 35 to 50 minutes to really um, click on all those links, watch all those videos and be able to answer uh, the questions that are listed on your crisis and safety planning quiz on the bottom half of it. Um, so you will go to the website that you see on the screen and use this for the rest of your training so that you become familiar with how to complete the CSSRS. Um, once you complete that quiz, make sure you print it out again to give it to your supervisor to show that you have passed. Um, if you don't pass, you may take the quiz um, a second time. Um, you may want to review the information within the, within, the, within the webinar one more time to ensure that you can pass the quiz the second time. Um, so I believe that is everything you need to know so far. You will continue on to the CSSRS webinar to complete the quiz. Um, I appreciate your attention to this training. And again, please do not hesitate to contact your supervisor if you're ever unclear about how to handle a client in crisis or to complete any of the documentation that we briefly reviewed in this particular training. Um, so thank you so much.